their best player, Deb Haaland. Let's bring you an artist there. Wow. Hello and welcome to King's... Okay. Hello and welcome to King's Connection. It's been a while since we had a show, but this one's worth waiting for. How many of you heard about flamenco, but don't really know any more than the fantastic dance, the beautiful costumes, and the hot music? Well, tonight we're gonna find out everything about it from the history, where it began, what years it began, where it is in the world, right up to the present. And we have an artistic director from the Flamenco Society with us, Eddie Diaz. And then we're gonna talk about some upcoming concerts, some famous people worldwide, they're gonna be appearing and you'll have a chance to see. If you want lessons, there's some information about that. So let's get into the world of flamenco. Hello, Eddie, and welcome to the show. Good. Thank you. Okay. Now, first of all, we go back, just so we know this, yeah. but we go back to rock and roll. That's right. And that's maybe that's 40 a... years ago. Right. We're yeah. that old, huh? <laughs> yeah. And I think I found out after being out of touch for so long, we still live in the same town. Right, yes, what only a few miles away. Yeah. Right, right, <laughs> I noticed by the prefix of your phone number. So where along the way did you hear flamenco and become interested? Well, I was born in Latin America, and okay. so flamenco was part of my life, you know, right. but it was more, it's a background kind of a thing, you know, it's something that you listen to, sure. but it's not something that you just went and found out what's really all about. So you actually uh, heard it first before Rocco. I, I didn't know you were born in Latin America. Well, you know, th this is the weird thing. I actually myself also try to remember where I heard it first. Yes. And I, and I always remember having all this CD, well, at that time it were tapes. Yeah. <laughs> and eight tracks yes. of flamenco, right? I don't know why I have them, and I think yeah. this day I don't know why. Right. But then when it really hit, it was uh, about 20, uh, well, 18 years ago. Okay. I heard Two guitars from Los Angeles right. that at that time th their names were Struns and Fora. At that okay. time, I thought that they were uh, flamenco guitars, so everybody sure. else thought that they were flamenco guitars. And me being such a big fan of guitar, that yeah. interests me thinking it was flamenco. And I sure. thought, my God, this is incredible. I got to find out what's all this about. Right. I was just completely infatuated by this, by this guitarist. And was it flamenco? Or uh, no, you it wasn't it flamenco, was? but they did have a flavor of flamenco. Fla now, a lot of people, when they think of flamenco, they just think of dance and a really hot acoustic guitar. But there are vocals, there are different instruments like piano and stuff. Um, it's it not can just. Be, yeah, flamenco is very misunderstood. Okay, and stop right there and tell us where did it begin and what was it? Give us okay. a general idea. Uh, it's a very ancient form of music. Okay? okay, it's so ancient that we cannot really trace its beginnings. Okay, but we can go back up to India. The roots of it. India. India. Oh my but gosh. it's even before that, right? But okay. just where we can start tracing. Okay. There's two schools of thoughts where it really came from. One of them is from India, and then it came all, all from the Arab countries, okay. all the way to the south of Spain. And definitely wow. this settled in Andalusia, which is the south of Spain. Yes. The other thought of school is that it came through the north, okay. coming through the north. Uh, of Europe and then coming through the north of Spain and okay. coming down, definitely we do know oh, that is settled on the Andalusia, the south of Spain, Andalusia. So this From is there, probably an unwritten history, so it's kind of, and it may have generated in both areas and in the it, southern it may have Spain. That. It definitely it has its influences from all those countries. You know, it yes. has the Middle Eastern influences, yeah. Indian influences. It's a very, very rich music. It just right. has so much of it. And that's what makes flamenco so beautiful. Right. It's the richness that has picked up from all these different countries. Yes. And later on in the show, just so everyone knows, we're going to have live flamenco dancer and a guitar player accompanying her. We're going to strike the set, bring out a nice wooden floor there for the go. acoustics. That's going to be exciting. Yes, definitely. So now, you were born and raised in Latin America. It may have started in India or Northern Europe, and then maybe 1800s was it? The 1800s. It? Okay. Uh, well, that's how we can trace it back to the 1800s. Okay. It may have been way, way before that, but sure. uh, you, you know, as far as the school thoughts, that's right. where we can trace it from. And, right. Uh, but definitely it did settle in Andalusia, Spain. Yes and it was adopted by the gypsies. And that's the key adopted word right there. Adopted by them, okay. And that's the key. Yes. The gypsies, that's their music. That's who does flamenco the right. best. The, uh, this music wow. belongs to them. This is right. their music. South of Spain, places like okay. Jerez, yes. Sevilla. I mean, we can go on. It's Would just, this um, be considered a golden era where it really came into its most popular uh, style? No, they are 15, uh, the 15, uh, let me see what's in the 50s, it was the golden okay. era. 1950s. Some, uh, the 1950s. Okay. Some of the greats. Wow. Yeah, there was a very incredible thing happening yeah. at that time. I was going to ask but, you that. Now, historically, there's, I'm sure, very famous people, musically or as dancers. 
there is. And there's just so many of them because it's just so rich and there's so many of them. Right. And right now, I think it's a great era what's happening in flamenco right now. Right. I consider it to be something that right. is going to have a lot of impact. Uh, right. Why? Because uh, the influences that is taken right now, well, it, first of all, it's becoming worldwide. Now, yes. flamenco doesn't belong to Spain anymore. Right. Uh, it was about what, uh, six months ago where it was the treasure at the world, it was announced. Yes. And now it belongs to the whole world. Wow, yeah, so now that's there, surprising to the point where I went online earlier to get a little information, and I read that uh, there are more flamenco dance academies in Japan than in Spain even. Yeah, flamenco. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? I it's did a show on um, the history of ukulele, and surprisingly, Japan had the second most ukulele players really? in the world next to America, which we don't think that. Exactly, so right, I right. think, you know, with the international media and everything, is it's doing a lot of good artistic uh, development. Exactly. Wow. Right. Yeah, Japanese has ever been a big uh, enthusiastic of flamenco, and yes. they, I was studying it, and they take it very seriously. Wow. All the major artists in Spain go to Japan. They do uh, oh, to, perform? Yeah, to perform, to okay. perform, uh, or to teach for yes. classes. Yeah. But definitely, uh, yeah, they, they go there. In Spain, we have what they call the Biennale, which is the biggest flamenco festival that is done is every other right. year. What's in it called Spain. again? Biennale. Another. Every other okay. year. Okay. And then the two languages that they have it is the Spanish and Japanese. All the no. announcements are in Spanish oh and Japanese. The programs are Spanish and Japanese. There's so much to learn because who would have thought that? You know, who would have known that? And as you're going to see after after the show, one of the dancers, right. is, she's Japanese, which she is, is uh, Japanese. she's Japanese, and she's one of the flamenco side instructors. You know, so I mean, oh a lot gosh. of people may think, you know, what's the yeah. relation between Japan sure. and Spain? And it's like what we're talking about. Wow. And, uh, I think it ties in, too, with, uh, you know, if you just took art, like fine art painting, uh, some of the great movements were, say, Impressionism in France, but then you had American artists who could paint that style just as well. Sure. So, I mean, it, it makes sense. Now, I had one question for you I don't know the answer to. Does bullfighting tie in with any of the dance styles or moves? It ties up with flamenco. It does tie up? Yeah, there is. There's okay. a lot of compositions that are written for bull dancing, for, yeah. I mean, for bull that goes with dancing. Sure. There's, there's a lot of, yeah, flamenco and bullfighting yeah. goes yeah. Uh, back to back. Yeah. It's unfortunately what's happening now with, uh, with that art, you yeah. know, a lot of people on, are against that idea, and it's, sure. and it's sad, you know, because, but definitely if you're a flaming, flamenco aficionado, more yeah. likely you also a uh, bullfight. Enjoy bullfighting. Bullfight. yeah. Sure, sure. What, uh, historically first, what instruments were popular so long ago with it? Great question. Yeah, so originally, you, you know what flamenco is? It's cante. Cante is singing. Okay. That's what flamenco oh. is. Most people do not think of that flamenco. I would not. It's cante. Okay. Originally, that's all there was. We didn't have, when oh. the gypsies start out with this great R, yeah. all they did was doing cante, singing. Yes. They didn't have no guitar, they didn't right. have no dancers, they had no instruments. Okay. The other thing that they have was this. Yes. Palmas, yes. hand clapping. Uh, wow. Great instrument. Uh -huh. Very, very, very hard to play. Uh -huh. almost, almost impossible to play. That's how hard it is. Wow. Uh, but that's what, that's the main instrument in flamenco is okay. the palmas or, or the voice. And right. if you're really aficionado of flamenco, yes. if you really understand flamenco, and if you know what flamenco is about, then you appreciate cante. Yes. But the first time, if you're not, more, yeah. uh, most people, when they hear Kante for the first time, it's like, yeah. e. <laughs> Really? Yeah. It's something that you got to learn, something that you got to acquire a taste for it. Yes. And it's something that is very, very, very hard. Flamenco is okay. one of the hardest forms of uh, arts in the world. Right. It's very, very complicated art. Uh -huh. And you definitely have to know about it and acquire taste for it, you know. Now, it's like, uh, like beer, like first time you drink beer, sure. like yes. you, you know. Yes. So this is the same thing when you, you hear Kantia yeah. for the first time, yeah. you know, you're like. Ugh. Now, historically, it must have been that this was all passed down from like father to child or mother to daughter without being written down. I mean, there wouldn't Flam have been anything written down. Flamenco huh? doesn't get written down. Right. That's what flamenco is all about. It's, it's a family thing. Yes. Uh, this, this is not, an, like I mentioned from the beginning of the program, this belongs to the gypsies. Yes. This, for them, it's not only an art. This is a lifestyle. Exactly. This is what they do. Wow. Okay? This is what they do on their lives. Yeah. They live, eat, 
breathe flamenco. Yes. Right? And the families, they pass it from grandparents, from the father, yes. from the son to the baby. Even yeah. with the babies. I mean, when you're a baby, I mean, I can tell you stories what I've seen in Spain. Really? Baby six months old. Uh, yeah. You know, here in the United States, when you're a baby, what do you do? Giga gago, giga gago. Right. Over there, they're already doing palmas already. Right. And they start singing to them. Wow. So even when they're in the mother's stomach, they, sure. they're already hearing these beats. Sure. So for them, the rhythms are natural already when they're born. Right. It's, it's and, part of the DNA. Yeah. It's already built in them. Right. And I believe that 100% because I've been a drummer my entire life, and I see see children playing that they haven't unlearned yet. They haven't been, it's the heartbeat and the eardrum, and they haven't been told they can't do it. And so it's just, it's their spirit running free. Right, right. So now catch us up, the halfway point for me right now would be, what's happening with the Flamenco Society? And we're putting a contact information under you as we speak. What's going on? You're the artistic director, so what's going on between the historical and now it's popular all over the world? So what does your society offer or? Okay, well, we've been around for over 25 years. We're okay. a non-profit organization. Uh, we present flamenco concerts like the one that I'm gonna talk about in a second. Yes. And that's more like if a formal flamenco concert, yes. but also we do formal flamenco concerts, and then we also do classes, and we teach guitar classes, dance right. classes, and this, our instructors are gonna be here later on. Right. And uh, we have worked with, uh, most of the greatest uh, flamencos in the world, all right. from traditional flamenco, like people like Sabicas, Carlos Montoya, Jose Greco. Wow. Uh, Everyone knows uh, those names. All those names. We have present them all of wow. all those. Then after that, when I took over, I became more, I'm more into the modern part, or I love the modern part as, as much as the traditional, yes. but yeah. I start bringing more of the modern people, which are pe right. people like Vicente Amigo, Paco de Lucia, Gerardo Nunez, Canizares. Those right. are modern flamenco guitarists. Yeah. Now we're going into another stage, sure. uh, and, and you you mentioned about what's coming up is we're bringing a flamenco pianist. When you mention right. flamenco pianist, everybody, huh? That's what, what is I Is there such a thing as flamenco pianist? There's yeah. not such a thing as yeah. flamenco pianist, to tell you the truth. Yeah. And we, we are bringing one. <laughs> we wrestled a little bit about this because you were so excited to talk about her. And I'm thinking, well, if we're going to do the history of flamenco, people are going to expect about the dance and the costume and the guitar. So we agreed we're going to talk about both, which, yes, we've covered the history, and we're going to show what people expect of typical flamenco, but you're bringing a world-class pianist who's a flamenco piano, piano player, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Wow, and, and they're coming to the Bay Area? Yeah, they're coming to the Bay Area. Wow. They're gonna be here in July. July, uh, okay. For three, uh, for three performances here, they're gonna be on the wow. 15, 16, 17, and maybe a, a couple more days after that. And where are they performing at? They're gonna be performing here in the city, Mountain View. Okay. Uh, they're doing a show there. At the Performing Arts Center? At the Center for Performing Arts oh, in Mountain View. Beautiful theater. Beautiful theater. We've wow. been there for 12 years, I believe You've so. You've done shows 12 years uh, 12 there? 12 years there, yeah. Bringing people yeah, from br around from the world? Spain. From yeah, Spain, from Spain, yeah. Oh my gosh. And they're also gonna be, gonna be in uh, at the Hoover, uh, Historic Hoover Theater at the Rose Garden area in San Jose. Yes. And then they're doing a private concert up in Gilroy. Right. And then they may be doing a, a, a something else in Half a Moon Bay, wow. but that has not been confirmed yet. Wow. You get pretty excited about this stuff, huh? Oh, it's, it's my life. <laughs> uh, you know, it's me and, me and my wife, yeah. you know, me yeah. and my wife, are, we're into it and right. we just love it, you know. And uh, yeah. my wife was the one that kind of uh, helped me connect with this, uh, yeah. with this artist. With and she's this, sitting uh, right over yeah, here, here. Yeah. Set, just so everyone knows. And she's part of our inspiration. She's wearing a beautiful dress and everything. Uh, but she became friends with uh, Rosario La Reina Gitana, the okay. Gypsy Queen. That's, uh, that's why they translate to La Reina that Gitana. Coming? That's who's coming. Okay, uh, real quick, while you say that, I'm going to have them bring up the tag under you, which will give her website okay. so people can go and see, well, this is who's coming and, and, and see some clips of what she actually does. Oh, definitely. You got to see. People, yeah. people got to see this and see this. Yeah. Artist. I mean, and this is what happened. My wife saw her on uh, on Facebook. Okay. And she showed it to me. And when we saw it, it was going, oh my God, listen to this. This is just amazing. Right. Her passion, and you know, that's why Flamenco oh is, but it really comes out of her passion. Sure. It's just so beautiful. And you really got to see it. I mean, yeah. people got to see this. And wow. it's, just, it's just amazing. So my yeah. wife tells me about it. I got only interested about it. We sure. started talking to her through the internet. Then we're, uh, last year we were in Spain and, and we got to meet her and that was yeah. it. We're in love. I go, this is, we have wow. to, we have to bring her to the United States. We got to right. show people this. Yes. And the United States people don't know this. And no. we got, uh, people got, we got exposed this to flamenco. Yeah. You know, flamenco Let me ask pianist. you this. When she performs live in a theater as big as that, is it her solo with piano or will she have 
percussion or a guitars backing yeah. her up? Actually, or? she has a huge group. She has a 12-piece group. Oh, that's why I'm with, asking. That's uh, unbelievable. She has a percussion, oh. violin, singer, oh guitarist. And that's what she wanted to bring here. Sure. Her fortune is very, very expensive to bring yes. so many people, paying for flights, hotels, and of everything course. else. So we bring in uh, to a minimum because that's all we can afford. But, uh, of course. Uh, if you people, uh, like if, if you can look at their website, you can yeah. see the different performances that she has done on TV. Yes. She's been, she's the new coming star in Spain right now. Yes. She's doing some of the major yeah. uh, TV shows in Spain right now. And they're right now on, on her website and okay. YouTube. You can do a search for her and look on at it. That uh, okay. she, I mean, she is, she's recording an album. Yeah. And then you can see her group, her full group with flutes, yeah. uh, Say her name again slowly okay. because we know her website's, uh, you know, being posted under you right now. But what is her name? Her name is, uh, okay, her real name is Rosario Montoya. Ro Rosario Montoya. Everybody in Flamenco has a nickname. Yes. Her name is uh, La Reina Gitana. Oh, which does this translate mean something? to, yeah, the Gypsy Queen. The Gypsy that's, Queen, oh that's my what gosh. She's, she is a Gypsy Queen. Right. I mean, you see, she, she's a monster. I mean, you see right. the presses that she has. Yes. With, I mean, her arms and her speech and her yes. enthusiasm. I mean, she is the that's queen. That's exciting. I mean, you know why, so too? Because for her. you know me from before, and my name isn't Rusty King. Well, that's it right. wasn't originally. <laughs> but I became king because I wanted to have a powerful <laughs> name. And, you know, with my show and my music sure, and everything. Right. So it's exciting that she would do that and be the Gypsy Queen. And it fits her. It goes with her personality. Wow. A lot of people would think like, oh, who did you think she's getting that name? No, but no. You, you meet her. Yeah. And you go, yeah, she is and the gypsy queen. Exactly she right. She is La Reina Gitana. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, I toured with Cajun Zydeco, which is French black music from Louisiana. I toured with Queen Ida. Uh, and yeah, she yeah. was fantastic. She was number one in the world. If she wasn't named Queen Ida, it wouldn't have had that top edge to it. You know? And, and so I think it's exciting that she named herself that. Actually, wow. it was, she didn't name herself, but that was uh, they started, uh, the, the oh. kid. Uh, her parents, uh, okay. she, uh, when she was little, they gave oh her, my th gosh. that's the name that you just kind of, right. it was given to her, and she, yeah. and that's what she has really become, La Reina wow. Gitana. So She's that's amazing. July 12th? Uh, July uh, 15th, 15? in Mountain View, yes. uh, the 16th at the uh, uh, Historic Hoover okay. Theater, and, and then the 16th is a private concert, and right now we may do okay. something on the 24th sure. half in Mumbai. Oh, that's really yeah. exciting. And uh, to answer your original question, she yeah. is coming with a dancer, with a flamenco yes. dancer, and with a percussionist. Oh, how exciting. Yeah. Wow. Now, being a professional percussionist, what kind of percussion comes along with it nowadays or historically? Okay, there bongos? Is, uh, I heard uh, bongos on the music when we had our intro. Well, there is people that are, are putting bongos in flamenco. Okay. Right now, they're doing everything with flamenco. I mean, okay. they, they have horns, they have strings, they I have see. congos, bongos, you name it, they have it all. Uh, right. But in the 70s, uh, the great maestro Paco de Lucia incorporated a box, which is called the cajon, originally it's from Peru, from the Indian Peruvian. Yes. And he put it into flamenco because it kind of resembles a lot the sound of the dancers. Yes. And from there, it has become part of flamenco. Is it the box they sit on they and sit play on with their the hands? Yeah. I did that yesterday at my friend's music store. I told him about this show coming up, and he said they use this kind of instrument, which I had never seen before. It's becoming very popular, actually, oh, even rock gosh. bands. And now I see yes. rock bands using a yes. cajon now. Wow. But originally it's from Peru, and now it's yeah. people using it because they hear it in flamenco. Yeah, and they nicknamed um, it the beatbox. The beatbox. <laughs> oh, it was exciting. It's, oh, it's wow. a great instrument. It's yeah. very, very nice. And then at the same time, there's the traditionalist people that are very against this, of course. to bring something like this into the art, you know? But of it's course. all a matter of taste, and, yeah. you know? And, it's who's to say, you know, whatever people like, you know. And, and you know, but, things uh, have to modernize. I mean, you, you watch the development of rock and roll, and, you know, the people who were Elvis fans then hated the Beatles, and us who were Beatle fans hated punk rock, or, you know, it just sure, goes sure. on like that, but it's, and it's nice. And some people see it as a corruption of the music. I mean, I'm, no. not taking, I'm not taking one side or the other. I love traditional flamenco. I love yes. what's uh, called uh, flamenco puro. Pure yes. flamenco. I love yes. it. I love cante. At the same time, I love things like uh, modern flamenco pianist right. with a cajon right, and a dancer. Right. Uh, yeah. So I'm, oh, I, I, I see it all. For me, I would compare it to, I don't care for opera, traditional heavy opera, but Andre Bocelli, when he sings pop opera, I absolutely love it. There you so go. it's right. good to have it for everybody. Sure. You right. know, we can choose from everything. So now with your society, looking in the future, what do you think the future is of flamenco? You know, um, what what might change, or what do you see coming? Oh, it's uh, very exciting right now. Yeah. 
Yeah, right now there is, uh, well, the place where, from, where La Reina is ca coming from is, uh, is a city named Jerez, okay. which is in the south of Spain. Yeah. And that's one of the, that's the birthplace of flamenco. Yes. That's where some of the great flamenco artists have come out. There's various places, but that's one of them, and that's one of the most important ones. Right. And there is incredible young artists over there that are coming out that wow. are just amazing, and they're doing some very, very beautiful things. Yes. Uh, there are some artists that are, uh, you know, with Kante that they're doing in the incorporation that's happening. Right. And there are artists that also are still very traditional, but they just uh, are right. doing some very beautiful things. And yeah. those are the kind of people that we want to continue bringing, the new young guys sure. that are doing exciting things. Yes. Know? And at the same time, I also want to continue, I mean, right. I suppose, uh, teaching people about traditional flamenco, not forgetting of the course. roots. Uh, absolutely um, true. Teaching people, well, our mission is to teach people, you know, that's what yes. we are, we're educational. Yes. Uh, let people know about what Kante is, what are the greats, who to listen to, sure. not to forget the roots and where we come from. You, you gotta keep that in, you gotta, right. I always remember your roots. Yeah. You and cannot you're a move in on without that. that. You're the perfect person for that, because, I mean, it's just like you just discovered it yesterday, but still, it's where you were born you were exposed to it. Right. So, you know, yeah, yeah. all I, the years in between. And I do have it in my blood. I mean, I do yeah. have a Spanish blood in yeah. me, yeah. And, uh, and it has just taken over our lives, like me and right. my, my wives. And, yeah. uh, you know, my wife, she's uh, America, but yeah. she had that Spanish Spanish passion inside really? of her. Really? And then we yeah. both us together, you know, we're just yeah. going over, you know, watching the videos and yeah. talking about it and just constantly watching the yeah. Spanish TV and the flamenco shows, wow. going over there and meeting all the different people. Wow. And because of the flamenco society, it opens the door for us in sure. Spain to meet a lot of people to go and witness some great, great shows. We I had that. We were there a year ago when we saw La Reina and we had a chance to see some shows that and people, only gypsies are allowed to go, and we, is were, that and right? we, were, we were welcome to. As I said, this is a gypsy thing, right? Yeah. And it's a very Thai family, it's a very Thai thing, flamenco, is so right. they keep it a lot to themselves. It's very hard for a foreigner okay. or to come in into their world. Sure. But yeah. they have opened the door to us. Sure, because it would be a cultural a thing. Cultural thing. You'd have to be very respectful exactly. to it. Yeah. You know? Wow. And we're so grateful for it, and we have been so fortunate to see, sure. see some incredible shows. Yeah. Things, I mean, we have been walking into, a, there's only six flamenco singers and some of the best in the world. Only right. me and my wife coming in and with 30 seconds, there's tears in our eyes. So is that like, right? Oh my God, what is this? <laughs> is that kind of a thing, you know. It's, wow. We feel fortunate that we had the, the wow. pleasure and the opportunity sure. to accept it and that. Yeah. Sure. So someone who loved art would be standing in front of a Picasso, and you've got to see that, or exactly. a Da Vinci, right. and you've got to actually see that exactly. live. There's nothing and better than live music. You know, so yes, people can go to the website, or they can buy a DVD or a CD, but to see it live, you really have to do that, huh? And that flamenco definitely is that. And also yes. the other thing is uh, very intimate, too. I right. mean, it's great. I mean, you can go to the huge, I mean, they have, they have flamenco now in the stadiums, and okay. huge theater, and is it's that great. Right? I mean, that's a big Flamenco yeah. is, but to go to a smaller place, and I think like the Mountain yeah. View Theater, that's a perfect yeah. place. We've been there for the years. Is. It has that intimacy. It's a, a small place. Right. It has a great sound. Doesn't yeah. matter where you see, you're able to yeah. see everything. And it's a small town. It's easy to get to. There's parking right under the theater. Exactly. And, and you can't beat that. Right, right. You know? And really, uh, we have about two minutes left. One thing I want to say is that it shows how great and cultural and historical and beautiful it is that it's holding its own in this modern world with so many things to choose from, right? Sure, oh, definitely. Yeah. And, and it's just getting bigger and bigger now, wow. more, more than ever, yeah. and it is gonna be bigger, because right now there's some artists that are really sure. becoming huge on all over the world. And yeah. just, like, like I said at the beginning of the program, yeah. it's not Spain's music now, it's belongs to the world now. Yes. And, uh, and everybody's enjoying it now, and people are yeah. uh, doing it now, all around it. It's, Have uh, you ever wonderful. been so excited you've been driven to just break into a dance? Oh, all the time. <laughs> I knew it, I knew it. There's very few people who've been on my show, Eddie, that are as excited as I am, uh, and you're it. I mean, I see that, I mean, they, my, oh my, my wife, I mean, we cry. I mean, there's tears. And we're not a shame. <laughs> I have mean, joy just watching the stuff, man. It, wow. It's just unbelievable. I mean, wow. it's, a, it, it's an addiction. I mean, yes. that's what it is. It's just like a drug that yes. you just cannot get.
get enough of it. You just want <laughs> more and more and more. And wow. it's, it's, you want everybody to know about it. You want right. to talk to everybody, hear this, listen to this, watch yeah. this, because it's just that passion that art has. Right. Uh, there's not that many arts that has this. It's just so beautiful and wow. just really touches your soul, your yeah. heart. It just really gets in your blood. Well, on that note exactly, I couldn't have give, given a better outro than you just gave, <laughs> yeah. so I'm going to sum it up. We have about 30 seconds. Thank you for joining us. Well, thank you for us. having me. Thank you for stirring Great. up our passion. <laughs> Great. And now we're going to strike the set. We're going to have guitar, dance. It's going to be beautiful. So thank you for being with us, King's Connections. We're going to go out right now, but come back with some exciting dance. Thanks to the Flamenco Society and the artistic director, Eddie, for being with us. And we'll see you again. Stick around for the dance. Thank mm -hmm. you.